Welcome in to the show. It is Solid Dudes with the Shootster. I am your host, the Shootster. Thank you so much for being here. It's funny, Jorge Gonzalez goes early one today. Well, if it wasn't, it'd be very interesting that we fired up the stream. Like, to what end, I would wonder. Uh, I, one of the reasons why I decided to start early is because I could be joined by a very special guest, one that if you've been listening to the Chad Duke show recently, you know has been the subject of much controversy. But uh, to put any rumors to rest that uh, he is no longer speaking to me i'm very excited to bring in my buddy steve pie taster who is speaking to me hello steve how are you bud we were speaking all weekend so i, I don't <laughs> this ruse this cunning attempt to try to trick me yes, yes. i understand well, it's good to see you i noticed you got the microphone set up Congrats. how about it do you want me to scratch on things and make noises <laughs> i would feel better about it if you're Wiggle actually record. if you get your collar somehow involved with your broadcast but uh <laughs> I got some I, scotch tape here. I see you're at work. You're in the, the wood room, which I'm a big fan of, as you know. Always at work in the paneled office. Paneled office of doom. So um, I thought maybe we, I wanted to, we've replaced the, the absolute gong show that was the event that I was trying to do in your house. Um, we've replaced that with an absolute gong show of an event in somebody else's house. And um the only people that know about this are the 38 people that were watching live on Facebook last night when we recorded um, when today's episode, Wednesday's episode. So I thought maybe you would take some personal satisfaction um, in seeing what it is that we've replaced you with. Um, and that, of course, is the Solid Dudes with Chad Dukes presents the Jester Family Pizza Party and Seance Sleepover. Um, that is a frightening <laughs> image right there. I, I don't know what's coming out of that hole in the center, but oh, I don't brother. Be anywhere near it. Oh, brother. There's going to be some stuff coming out of that hole. As, as you know, with all things Jimmy J, uh, anything could be coming out of that hole. So, um, you know, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but it quite naturally happened that in the chat, we had two volunteers to go up to Jim Jester's house and spend the night. Oh, um, right. Um, and this is after, and, and I encourage you, I don't think I'm going to spoil much here, Steve, because there's so many bites on this particular apple, but, um, this was after biker Sean did a full walkthrough of Jimmy's parents' house and was reporting on all manner of, you know, difficulty, which you would assume is going on up there. Um, but the thing I was the most intrigued by was the basement. Um, I don't know if you heard any of the, uh, the discussion that night about it. I know you're a busy person, but um there was an enormous amount of consternation surrounding what was going on in the basement of this house um and what we found out i think there's some footage actually that i can make available to the the, the viewing audience uh, here. yeah you didn't see any of these images i i did i i didn't realize that was in the basement that that's that's a frightening specter you want to go ahead and take a look at that uh, air vent up there on the ductwork. Um, you can see that perhaps black mold might be an <laughs> issue down there. Uh, that appears to be Jesus Christ over Jimmy's right shoulder. Yes. Um, the prancing horse. 
I think if the, this was an actual bar, uh, Steve, the name of it would be the Prancing Horse. I, I think that makes sense. <laughs> you see this like birdhouse thing down towards the left here? Yeah. I, yeah. It looks like it has eyes. And then are those buckets full of uh, cremains from Jester's past? It's a great question. And it's interesting that you brought that up because what we learned um, during this episode... <laughs> And this, of course, is the worst episode of American Pickers anybody has ever <laughs> subjected themselves to. What do you think is in this paper sack that says Mars over here? Is that Mars uh, music? Someone's head. I. Yeah, it's rough. Um, uh, there's there's some things in this basement, by the way, that are that are worth some money. Uh, that's another thing that we learned. Um, but Jimmy is not allowed to remove. So I, I don't want to get. I don't want to spoil everything, but. The, the the moral of the story is that two guys agree to go up there um, to Glen Burnie and sleep on the floor of that basement in a tent. Um, <laughs> is it what is the tent to keep? Is that to keep the mold from falling on them while they're asleep? Or honestly, yes. That they said they wanted protection if there's you know dander and, and those sorts of things. <laughs> But another part of this that we learned, and this is why I thought that you would be exceptionally interested because of your passion for the paranormal and the haunting experiences you yourself had in uh, Russia, I believe, in some sort of meat warehouse. Yes. <laughs> what happened to the pie tasters there? Then you were in a haunted meat warehouse? Yeah, we were in some dormitory from the from in eastern Germany, and the uh, the workers from the 50s were trying to get to us. <laughs> it, was, it was terrifying. So you would... Would you swear that that place was haunted, or do you think your mind was just playing tricks on you? I, it, it seemed very haunted. It it was cold. It was summertime. It shouldn't sure. have been cold. It um, it, there was no one around. You were looking out the windows. There was no activity outside, but you could hear people marching around inside. And sure, yeah. It, well, the reason why I ask is that you're the closest thing we have to an expert. Now, what we have in this house is we have confirmed, and I didn't realize this until last night. Three generations of <laughs> jesters have resided in that house, with the first two living and dying inside of oh that my home. Gosh, yes, um, yeah. There is a weird. So what we also figured out is that at some point, three generations ago, the jesters were movers and shakers. Like they had a shuffleboard table down there, mm -hmm. they had a tile floor and a bar. Like they would entertain, and now you know they've become this amorphous you know, sedentary, grafted to the couch type of a fucking slob being. No disrespect, no disrespect. And so all of that is is fallen by the wayside. But what I think is very possible, and we have consulted with Matthew Burke, who is a renowned ghost hunter, um, is that we are going to have the tools and the Ouija board available to hopefully have a seance to communicate with the jesters from the past. Um, Man, you're playing is, with dark forces you're not the first person that's been concerned about that. Um, the boys are a little worried about it because, you know, if haunting is real, these are the perfect circumstances. There's pain. There's, there's misery. Um, there's deaths from lives that had no meaning. I mean, there's just, you know, the hodgepodge of everything that you would think of that would cause this. So that's why to offset that, it's also going to be a pizza party where, <laughs> We're going to get our favorite VHS tapes and we're going to hunker down. And when I say we, I mean, John Page, Corey Rita uh, and Jim, because Biker Sean and Ant-Man are going for the broadcast, but then they are leaving to go sleep in their home. They're the two that are concerned about the actual haunting affecting their being. Um, uh, and that's what I wondered when I saw the image, it had your name and, and Monk's name on it too. And I wasn't sure if you all were actually going to take the risk of, uh, do you see, a, but, but do you see like for this show, I would have had Chad and Steve on there. Right. But you're, no, okay. I get it. I you're get at it. Alexandria and I'm in Oakton falls. That is the way that we are going to be. There. Okay. I mean, that's a smart way to do it. And, <laughs> and it reminds me of several venues that we've played that, um, were big in the, you know, the roaring twenties. They, the rave in Milwaukee is one that's right across the street from where Jeffrey Dahmer, uh, lived. And then Jesus. there's one in North Carolina that, you know, back in their heyday, there were these just wonderful, glorious uh, houses of fun and entertainment. And then by the time 
there's a ska show there in the 90s. It's fallen into disrepair. And everyone who works there knows the names of the ghosts that reside, you know, behind the projection room or downstairs in the in the in the cooler. So I think you're you've stumbled upon a, a hotbed of paranormal activity. And I fully expect um, if not connection with the uh, behind the veil, perhaps one of these guys is going to be taken over by a spirit of a jester. I, I know that we're we're having fun here, but there is I watch a lot of ghost shit and I watch a lot of spirit and demonic shit. There are absolutely documented cases, 100 percent of people having symptoms of what you're talking about after they leave an accursed place. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if this is an accursed place, but I also know that every single piece of fiction that we have points to, and people say science fiction and fantasy can like predict the future of you know reality. That once you stop trying to get readings and once you start trying to contact the dead, that is when the shit goes down. And these dumb dums are gonna <laughs> sit in that basement in that filth and do that while eating slices of pepperoni and sausage. I mean, they're braver than I am. And what if one of them takes on the burden of this curse and then Jim <laughs> like it, it starts to improve, his life improves, oh my he, he God. slims down and, and, you know, the curse could be lifted from Jim. Maybe he's shouldering this burden. The Jester family curse is what yeah. you're referring to now. I don't know. I mean, I would say we don't have evidence of that, but all we need to look is the plight of these poor bastards. Um, and that would be all the evidence that you need. What I, what I would suggest everybody does, if you're watching on YouTube, go to the YouTube page. This video is up. Um, it was not going to happen for three weeks because, of course, I'm going to the El Dorado Film Festival tomorrow for Tapawingo. Um, and then the following weekend, we're going down to the beach for President's Day. So the next Friday after that which is the 23rd of February, will be this live broadcast. Um, and I think we fucked around, Steve, with them actually doing it from the basement. Jimmy's going to do an internet test <laughs> there um, just to see if we can actually have the stream itself. But the weird thing is most of the chicanery, I assume, is going to go on after the show when you get into the wee hours of the morning because the Friday Night Solid Dudes, they usually end around 9, 9.30. Mm -hmm. And you've got the rest of the fucking horrible evening. Uh, yeah, the witching hour. Uh well, hopefully they'll have recording equipment, you know, maybe a backup, a couple different devices to to record what's going on um, more than just a cell phone. 100 percent. They do. We're going to have a ghost box. We're going to have an EMP reader. Uh, we're going to have the Ouija board. Um, I think Matt Burke is lending us some equipment. And then also I'm up for buying some. Now, the readings could be <laughs> the readings could be. Um... <laughs> A little murky because there's a lot going on in this house, as you can see. <laughs> this is the first time you're seeing this photo. Uh, no, here. no, I just I, I saw it. and I also saw the one with the bird. And I wonder if there's going to be a little Santeria practiced in the basement with that bird. Oh, I didn't even think about that. You know? you're, you're talking about when Jester looked like he was going to slaughter the bird. I, right. I thought for sure. Yeah, there, there it is, right one. there. That's I think that's the one. <laughs> now, now here's the thing, Steve: is if there is a trial where I have to prove Jester is evil. This is that's, my opening statement that's right all here. You need right there. That's the glove doesn't fit. I mean, <laughs> I mean, uh, when I need to say anything about anything else he's done, there's his mom, his man breast pressing into her fucking ear. There is biker a biker Sean's look. <laughs> there's a murdering biker in her in their home, and then he's torturing this fucking the family cockatoo. Wow. Oh, oh. Lord. Yeah, I, I, this is this is wonderful. I can't wait for this one. You feel way better about this promotion than about Monstars versus Toilet. Oh, yeah. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 All right. All right. Let's do some super chat since you're here. Well, you got a hard out, correct? Don't you have some work stuff? To yeah, do? I got to get out in about 10, 10 right, or 12 minutes. I just, I just wanted to keep you updated. I wanted people to show proof of life. I was trying to tell people that everything's fine and you're a grown up and you weren't going to fucking <laughs> take your ball and go home that you've hit people with ratchets. They won't believe. No, you. I. And and again, I said it before when when I argue or try and make a point, my I definitely raise my voice. So I I think I came across more aggressive than than uh, the reality of the situation could be. And let's be honest, we were in a room full of beta males. You know how that goes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Joey eight one seven two twenty dollars super chat. Thank you so much, brother. Mars <laughs> is a local grocery store. It's probably full of bigger cookies. <laughs> Look at these cookies I got from Bigger. Um, Steve, have you ever had the pleasure to have the burger cookie? I've never had a burger cookie. 
they're fucking terrible. Um, they're they're really bad, and everybody in uh, Baltimore thinks that they are, you know, Oreos on steroids. I don't understand it. I've never understood it. Um, but let's are say, they like Hydrox? Are they trying to rip off Oreos? Or they no, just... no, they're in, they're inherently Baltimore. Yeah, there's that Mars bag right there. So I guess that could be a grocery bag. <laughs> Jim is so photogenic, you know. <laughs> just... I mean. This series of photos is my favorite thing ever because he's clearly being conversational. He's pointing out the value of things yeah. in the basement. <laughs> um, do you remember Mars Music in Springfield? Uh, yeah, I do. Definitely. It was right next to that um, that steakhouse where the girls dance with pasties. Uh, Dolphin Steakhouse, yes. which I believe is now the Paper Moon, which I believe is still a titty club because yeah. our, our mutual friend Ant-Man has uh, soiled that place oh, many times. Of course, that seems... You know, it was also in that shopping mall a, a, a lifetime ago. Um, I I know a record store was uh, in Springfield Commons over across the way. But... That's true, but that the Chesapeake Bay Seafood oh, House yes. was in oh, that one of my man. favorite places on earth, dude. I miss that, that place every day. That was a yeah, the one close to me off of Richmond Highway was a, a went there lots lots wow. of hush puppies. I imagine after there were some changes in the locale that. Well, we won't get into that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Joey. That is a very generous super check. Greatly appreciate you, Bobby Double L Dollar Ninety Nine Super Check. Glad to see Steve Pie. Well, how could you not be? I'm always glad to see Steve Pie, especially when he's taking some time out of the busy work day. Here is one of the cursed souls himself, Mr. Corey <laughs> Rita. Four ninety nine, Corey. I'm going to need you to super chat over everything you had laid away for your inheritance because I got to keep this show going after you pass, my friend. I just don't know, like, Corey's a normal dude and John's a normal dude, and it was their fucking idea to do this. Like, that's the part. Like, technically, Steve said he what liked people shitting in his house, but he never did invite 15 people over to his house to shit. That would be the difference in what these guys have done. Well, and Brian from Natural Red, you know, he's he's in that same camp, so. I would be willing, if we wanted to turn this into a more, like, so it could have, like, an amicable solution if Brian really wants us to turn in his toilet, like it kind of goes against what we thought the event was going to be for the first place. But I do think what a sense of camaraderie if you and me and Biker Sean and Tor and Monk and all these guys, if we're going warm bowl to warm bowl, I do think that could be a nice like brotherly bonding exercise. I still think it's disgusting, but you know, you're the, you're the boss here. You, you know, entertainment better than well, I, I do. <laughs> would you be willing to be a part of it and suck it up for the team? That's I'm, what I guess. That's uh, I'll what go I'm to brunch. Having. Right, but then after brunch, we have to move our bowels in a friend's house. See, I don't want to get back into this argument with you. Yeah. This is not where we, you and I don't need to be here. <laughs> uh, Bobby Double L, 1999 to Chad and Steve. Staying safe from the Jester Barbarian, uh, Barbadian, uh, Barbadian. Barbarian basement. Barbadian. <laughs> Look, I'm not a big fucking proponent of staying safe, but it, I, I think you agree with Stay me, Steve. <laughs> that's no place you want to be is down there. I don't want to be anywhere near there. Uh, I don't even want to be in Ellicott City while that's going on. Would you rather have us shit in your house or spend one night in Jester's basement? Oh, Jesus. I mean, talk about a Sophie's choice. That is a rough one. Um, because I, I would be giving up my soul if I go to Jester's basement. Well, you're kind of giving mean, that up if we all show up at our at your house with our butt cheeks spread, though, too. Uh, I mean, how what kind of life are you gonna have after that? I don't know, man. The the spiritual side of things, like I'm I might have to fall on a shitty dagger. Yeah, I mean, there's probably a bunch of shitty daggers in that base. So another thing is, uh, Sean went through and started cataloging some of the antiques that are in that basement, um, and he he spotted a G's worth of shit just while he was down there. And I hate to spoil today's episode, but, but people are going to listen to it anyway. Um, he said, Jester told us that he is not allowed to take anything out of that basement because his infirmed father spends all day watching the door. And if you move anything, he loses his mind. Wow. He's like e not letting his kids play with his action figures. I think so. But but those are his act. My, my point is the dad can't get up out of the chair. Like, why don't you say, <laughs> hey, old man, um, I'm going to sell all this shit and we're going to buy a second bed for Mamo. That's the way stair it's going lift for you. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Oh, boy. Bobby That's Double wild. thank you. It is. Uh, Corey, Rita, I'm more worried about the bathroom and the smells. Um, I think there's only one bathroom in that house, Steve. That's another part of it. So you're dealing with Jester, Jester's mom, oh, Jester's dad, 
and then presumably two guys are going to be eating sausage and pepperoni pizza for the entire evening. So, uh, and they're probably like handrails and like toilet uh, assistant devices. Literally the oh shit handle. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're a brave man, Corey. He is, but he also is a showman, and I appreciate that um, because I think this is something that has captured the hearts and the minds of the entire uh, listening audience. Joey8172, thank you for the $5 super chat. Perhaps the paranormal items will be found to bring to the Vegas Museum. That's interesting. Um, Of course, you're talking about uh, Zach Baggins' Haunted Museum. I I think that if we can get some sort of confirmation on video that there is a disturbance and i'm willing to bet anybody that wants to bet steve i bet they get a hit i bet they have a meter move i bet they capture something on video i just don't think there's any place you can be in um a location that's that unhappy and that old and has that much death in it saturated with sadness yeah you know i I think it's like when you go to a civil war battlefield like people get hits all the time because there's just too much has happened there um, very similar location, Jester's house in Glen Burnie in Antietam. Very, yeah. very, very, very similar. There's a connection between there and Gettysburg. <laughs> uh, Tom G, 1999. Thank you so much for the $20 super chat. Morning solid dudes ready for 8 p.m. and the end of the fast. That's right, Steve. I'm on day three of the water fast right now, as I'm sure a lot of the people watching are right now. You're in great spirits. I thought you had finished last night based on what a good mood you're in. Oh, um, kind of you. Um, it comes and goes. What what I've noticed is that, uh, like the like the karma chameleon, of course. Before noon, you're okay because you slept. Mm. Get up. You hit a big thing of bone broth. Hit a big thing of electrolytes, and then like, okay, I kind of feel normal. And then when one or two o'clock rolls around, you remember that you haven't eaten in three days, and uh, it kind of bogs you down. But the good thing is, is that I started at 630 on Sunday. So I've got uh, supper reservations tonight with the old lady. Nice. Yeah. So we're going to enjoy ourselves. But Tom G, thank you so much for the super chat, my friend. And sorry you couldn't come up for the episode uh, tonight. But we are not taping an episode tonight. So there is that. Travis Lich, what is up, my friend? Long time no see. Good to see you, my friend, in the chat. Appreciate you being here. Ricky holds Apple. Will there be a show shirt released for the Jester's Ghost Hunt? Um, I mean, it's not a bad idea. The problem is I've just been releasing so many show shirts recently. I think people are tapped out. I mean, I think that'd be a beautiful shirt. But I I thought that the club can't get right shirts. We're going to be a fucking home run. And we did about half what I thought we were going to do on those. So. Might pump the brakes on that, Ricky, but thank you so much for the 499 Super Chat. What you can do is head on over to youtube.com slash Chad Duke Show. Click like on that video because it is already up, and uh, make sure that you are subscribed and ready to go. All right. Well, you're up to date now, Steve, on everything that's going on. Um, I'm excited for this one. Yeah, me too. And I think the most reason why you're excited is that you will not be involved. Well, no. It's this, <laughs> the possibilities. The I mean, you know, I... I the, the Monstars, there, it was very singular in its purpose, but and overwhelming but, to the numbers. Yes, but the uh, the possibilities of what could go down on February twenty third with all the people involved in in that that basement that just looks terrifying. Uh, it, I can't wait to see what happens. Potential uh, through the roof. One last photo that I wanted you to see, just in case you weren't uh, privy to it. Has anyone in your family ever suffered from melanoma? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. What do you think about this? He should go to a dermatologist (laughs) um, immediately. Um, Immediately, right? I think I, I'm not the doctor, um, but I think that's, um, what the heck is it? I I can't think of what it's called, but I think it's benign, but he should definitely get it checked out. The problem, this is gesture, by the way, for those of you that are worried, this is feminine nudity. It is not. This is a bare chested (laughs) man. Um, The problem that I have with it, Steve, is he said this appeared overnight. He should get it checked out. Yes, right? that's that's the yeah. I mean, if you, that if that appeared overnight, what is that going to look like in a month? It, yeah, I mean, it's not as dark as the ones that worry me, but um, it, and you can get kind of a scaly uh, thing on your skin. But if it popped up overnight, yeah, that's and yeah, and then there's two spots up there. I I guess they're just freckles. I don't know. It's dude he's got it looks like honestly he's been shot with buckshot um and then everything's just kind of healed over 
I love Jimmy, but there isn't, I mean, there's not one fucking thing that isn't wrong with him. I mean, he's got the baldness, he's got broken the kids dick. that hate him, the broken pe- I mean, you think about it. Um, and he probably scratches it while he's asleep. He won't be above. I don't want to puke every, freak everybody out at his lunchtime, but he has kind of explained how he exacerbates the situation, um, <laughs> which isn't helpful. We're gonna miss you down in uh in Arkansas, my friend, the last time Tapa Wingo had a screening, you were in yeah. attendance. So yeah, uh, there's. I, I was surprised that I wasn't invited to this one. It was I'd love funny. to have you. I'd yeah. love to have you. You're more than welcome. We get you on the flight if you want. After I heard it's going to be 80 degrees and you have to drive two hours from Little Rock, I, yeah. I was not as sad that I missed out on this one. I think it'll be fun. It'll be a barnstorming type oh, of yeah. deal. But I did notice for those people that um are not on the group chat with me and Steve and Monk, um. Steve did beg Monk to, to cause a scene and ruin everything. <laughs> Just take a little heat off of me. Come on, Monk, you can do it. So, what, like, what would you? What would be your preferred manner that he destroy everything that happens around him? Well, Ant fell down. I fell asleep. Um, he he could fall over on someone. I I don't know. Uh, no, I I want it to be a big success. And I I did like uh, Monk is he's put on his salesman hat. And he's going to get uh, distribution for the movie. He's going to be a mogul, and and I believe he can make it happen because everything he touches turns to gold. Yeah, that's true. Definitely, um, everything that he touches, including uh, the fact that he wears bedroom slippers everywhere, and he is like a bag of bones shuffling around like a fucking zombie because he's been um, poisoning himself yeah, with uh, with Ozempic. The, the the thing about what he is capable of, though, is he needs a title, and I have to leave that up to dylan because th- here's what's crazy the the el dorado film festival i guess hasn't been around for a couple of years and they just came back they only gave out four hotel rooms uh, for everybody that was fucking coming down there and one of them is for buck wow <laughs> so we've got to come up with some chicanery because I believe, what was your title when you were up at uh, the dances with? Phil? I was part of the music department, or uh, uh, you know, the score, or something like that. And okay, it had to do I, with music. Do we remember what what was Ted's title? Because he was Ted, legal. He was on the legal side. So is Monk going to be catering? Because that's <laughs> super fucking lame. That would be perfect. Yeah. and he would be butthurt if. He, if. <laughs> This is our catering expert, Money yeah. Monk. Yeah, he ain't going to get a soul if that is the case. <laughs> Tyler Roberts, $20 super chat. Thank you, brother. Uh, can't wait for my salad topped with chicken and gargangola at 9 o'clock tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that good old gargangola. Everybody's a big fan. Well, thank you, Tyler, and thank you for the $20 super chat. Uh, 9 o'clock. Huh? You started it a little bit late, did you not? Well... Thank you for the support, and thank you for doing the water fast. I did want to share this with everyone um, because it is an official Chad Duke show event, which uh, needs to be stated. We'll be out at this bad boy. Oh, um, yeah. There it is, Steve, at the Tally Ho Theater, Friday, April 26th. Tickets on sale now. Uh, I got to say, Seeing you boys at the 930 Club the last time might be the best I think the band has looked and sounded that I can remember. It was just an excellent show. But as far as fucking energy outside of like the confines of a, of a city, man, that fucking Tally Ho show you guys did last year that we all went to was yeah. just unbelievable. I Thanks for the compliments, and I agree that that Tally Ho show was, was insane, and um, I hope that uh, we can get to 80% of what we of what we did last time because it was it really surprised everybody in the band uh everybody turned up and danced and acted silly and that's all that's all we can ask for and i think one of the reasons why if we're being completely honest is you said you guys generally don't do very well in virginia <laughs> generally for some reason that's a struggle yeah uh the state theater we always don't do well and <laughs> jam and java has been other than the shows you've promoted at jam and java they it, it has not been good for us so um, you know, traditionally people would rather drive to DC and risk getting mugged than go see us two miles from their house. And so we were pleasantly surprised that, that Leesburg was a hotbed of, of pie taster activity. It was very odd. And that's why it was great to see. Cause that is a fucking barn. Uh, and it yeah, was, it was big packed place. in last time. Got my tickets for the pie tasters. Well, Corey, I hope that when you're mm. there, you're not carrying a certain presence along with you. That yes. of Grandpappy Jester, of course, uh, Jebediah Jester. 
So this is scary. Thank you, Corey. I get chills looking at the Jester's house because I live just south of Glen Burnie and it looks exactly the same inside. In the 60 years my house has existed, it, there has oh, been geez. at least two. Oh, my God. Man, we should do it at that house. What the fuck? That's... I don't think any of Jester's family is. May I, Steve? Please donk themselves off <laughs> but i don't know for sure like maybe i should follow that up because if we're dealing with if we're dealing with suicides that that's an angrier that's a darkness there darkness on the edge of town you know all about yeah. that all right buddy well i'm glad you could check in i wanted to run all that past you i'm gonna keep going for a little bit but i know you got a work day to get to yeah i gotta so. bug out uh thanks for having me i'm sorry i miss you all at philomena and um that's all I'm right sorry that the cocktails were pre-made they were very much very pre-made. You would have been as disappointed as I was at all the very loud reggaeton that was being played ah. inside of the tiki bar that we were supposed to go to. If only on Hill wasn't was there. <laughs> if only fucking Adams Morgan made any sense whatsoever. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate all it. All right. See you. There's my guy, Steve Pie Taster. With fresh. Whoa, that's a lot of face. All right. That's a little bit better right there. God damn. It's good to get him on. I wanted to make sure that he got in and was able to uh, show you guys, give you basically a proof of life. And then I also wanted him to introduce him uh, to the promotion that is going to replace the one that we were going to do in his house. I did also, I teased this, not sure where, maybe on the thumbnail. I think on the thumbnail of this episode, I teased this. Let me pull it up. See if I can get it going here. You got oh Lord, and it's fucking it's so loud and it's so in my face. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but you'll hear it just now. Uh let's see. Share this tab instead. We'll get it going right here and right now. There he is. There's his smiling face. There's Mr. Tokyo himself. We're gonna get him going over to Mount Fuji. The Facebook supporters of the Chad Duke show know. That they're in for a real treat because my new book is just coming out and uh even in the main section here your boy got a feature so uh stay tuned in the supporter chat to know how you can receive these signed autobiographies so this isn't the supporter chat. Hey everybody oh, it's radio gigantor oh just wanted to let the facebook supporters of the chad duke show know that they're in for a real treat because my new book is just coming out and uh even in the main section here, your boy got a feature. Why would he need a feature if if it was his book? That's the question that I would have had before he recorded this audio. So here's what I want to do. And those of you that have already super chatted, you're already entered. But if anyone has super chatted today, you are entered to win a copy of Gigantor's brand new book, Legends of the National Parks, a cryptid anthology signed twice by young gigantor so if you've already super chatted fret not i will go through them one of you will win and i'll drop that bad boy in the mail and send it out to you we do have a couple of copies but everyone that super chats today during solid dudes um we do have to cut it off a little bit early today we'll be done at 12 30 or at least around there um you will be entered to win so thank you to tor for contacting his publisher and getting some of his brand new book sent to us ahead of time you guys will be the first ones to own a copy which is absolutely an honor uh regardless of whether or not you think it is or not um i can tell you it's a it's a fucking page turner and a barn burner i had one more thing that i wanted to uh share with you guys as far as just news going on with the program lots of stuff happening of course as you know i'm going out of town on thursday i'll be back hopefully God willing, as the crow flies on a fairly succinct basis. But I do have an episode planned for you for Thursday, and it will feature um, an interview with the director of One Shot and his brand new movie, One More Shot, Mr. James Nunn. Um, if you haven't seen these movies, they are a fucking blast. I know this looks a little straight to DVD in this poster, but... You'll just have to take my word for it. Shitload of fun. Um, they're available on demand, and they are made to look like the entire movie happens in one shot. And as you can see in this one, Tom Berenger and Michael Jai White are in them. Uh, spoiler alert, they play bad guys, but I'm getting a chance to interview that director. And I've been a fan of his since the first movie that came out pre-COVID. Super awesome. And if you're like me, 
um, and you don't mind watching a dude doing dudish things, uh, God forbid, a, a man acting like doing heroic endeavors and not being cuckolded by a bunch of cackling diverse ladies around him, a la uh, uh, Thor Love and Thunder, uh, Tor Love and Thunder. Um, you'll love these movies. They're a throwback to when action movies were action movies and uh, really well done and slick. And so uh, check it out. I think that you guys will like those movies and I'll be talking to the director of them earlier. Uh, well, later today, but early enough where well, you'll get them um, on tomorrow's episode, Thursday's episode. Technical difficulties aside. That book would be perfect. Would be perfect. The Pizza Hut contest. Not sure what that means, Scott, but thank you very much. For the one dollar nine super jet, you're now entered to win a copy of Tor's book. And again, a manifesto it is. The gentleman took the time to write and produce a 12-page book. So nobody can fault him for that. Um, a couple other things I wanted to get into about what is going to take place at Jim's house. And I think there's a school of thought where you don't believe in any type of supernatural um i really think there's a lot of people that side on that camp um none of the and I, I would throw i'd throw the i always talk to sven lloyd when um i was hanging out with him about how everyone's kind of lumped into this group like lesbian gay trans all this shit it's like these are very different ways of life and very different types of people and he always used to tell me that yeah he didn't feel comfortable about that he's like everybody's kind of walk is different and we're all kind of being I don't know if the word was marginalized, but in a weird way, I almost feel like that happens when you talk about the supernatural and you talk about um, cryptids and you talk about uh, UAPs, because I think there is a very logical discussion that can take place where you can make the argument that UFOs and UAPs have left the target demographic of the tim foil hat wearing goobers that have a miserable life and yearn for something to make it more interesting and are grappling with their own mortality i mean i think we all know why people want to believe in aliens is that it ultimately boils down to our fear of death um and if there's something else out there it means potentially there's something else out there and I think there's enough evidence for uaps now and it's reached the mainstream enough where I think that that has become a very different conversation than that of the afterlife, um, than that of earthbound spirits, however you want to discuss it, whether or not, I mean, demons and all that shit seem to be a completely different argument as opposed to whatever the energy is inside of us when our bodies wither away, becoming in some way trapped here. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that we want to think that the people that went before us are still existing in some shape, way, or form. But it ultimately boils down to what everything does is selfishness. We want to think there's something that happens after we pass away. So when you are discussing, we're having a lot of fun with this jester ghost hunt. But I think that um, the alien stuff, people like to... They like to lump that in with the supernatural and with cryptids. And it's they're really separate things, unless you believe, like I do, where whatever's happening at Skinwalker Ranch, all of these things are chronicled, right? Like there's portals opening up, there's cryptids, there's UFOs, they're all of it. If you believe that all of this is the result of dimensions that are kind of overlapping or groups of individuals or beings that have learned how to pass back and forth between dimensions, whether they're, you know, us from the future, whether it's an alien race, whatever. If you believe that, then everything can be explained by that. Then the fact that so many people have seen Bigfoot and we'd have bones of Gigantopithecus and, you know, we have somewhat of this evidence where, like, you know, the giant squid, we just got video of that over the past 10 years. Like, clearly, as our technology betters things that would have been described as cryptids previously, um, we can now just see as undiscovered species. Well, in addition to that, if there's interdimensional uh, capabilities by certain groups, then you would think that would explain 
where the flying saucers go, why they just disappear into nothing, why they go into the ocean and disappear, they go up in the sky and disappear, the transdimensional craft. It also could explain ghosts. It really could. It, it could just explain that there are beings traveling back and forth from dimensions that aren't ghosts, um, that aren't trapped there as some sort of a fucking vengeful wraith. I think that checks a lot of boxes. Um, but what I would ask is, because, and this is what I'd ask of you in the chat if you wanted to involve yourself. And that is, yesterday, when we were recording that show, um, when we were getting ready for, you know, coming up with the bones of the idea of doing this bit, it was all in fun, it was all in jest, and it was all, hey, we're going to do a pizza party, and, oh, Jimmy's life is sad, I'm sure there's ghosts in his house, like, it was all lighthearted. And then something kind of funny happened, I think he's in the chat, actually, but I was talking about getting a Ouija board just because I thought it was fun to get a Ouija board, you know, like fucking teenagers have been messing around with Ouija boards for, you know, as long as there's been pop culture. Um, you know, I don't know if you saw Ouija two. It's actually pretty good. Uh, the first one, not so much, but the, it's, the second one's a pretty good movie. We were talking to our buddy, Matthew Burke, um, and I guess he does, he is an amateur uh, ghost hunter, or at least has done some of it. And he said, uh, yeah, I've got all the tools. I will not touch a Ouija board. I won't get anywhere close to it. And I was like, well, that's kind of funny. Like, you, you, you'll go out and search for ghosts, and you can suspend disbelief long enough to accomplish something like that or pursue that, but what what is the line like what's the fucking you know what's the level of and what i don't know is psychosomatically i think it's very possible see if if you don't have physical panic attacks like i don't know how many of you in the chat have physical panic attacks i have them um and i have them when i know that i have physical panic attacks and i can still convince myself that i'm having a stroke or a heart attack or i've i've convinced myself my throat is closing off um, I've convinced myself I have a brain tumor and my fucking mom and my fucking dad apparently both have some of this and they never told me about it. So I was not situated properly to deal with it as an adult. And I'll always hold that against them as a grudge. Point B, when those two cute little twink ghost hunter kids, and I always forget their name. They're very famous, very cute. They've got the Patrick Mahomes haircuts. Everyone loves them. When they sit in the devil's rocking chair in Zach Baggins haunted museum, and they claim to have back pain afterwards for months, for months and years afterwards. I don't think they're lying, but I know for a fact that when I get into a crowded movie theater, I start having symptoms of a panic attack just because it's triggering, just because I don't, my, my trigger is I do not want to be the asshole that gets pulled out of a big group of people in an ambulance and everyone's looking at me. It, I would rather drop dead than have that happen. It's my greatest fear. So whenever I'm in a, a plane or any place where it's a bunch of people, and if I was to start having one of these things, it would be a huge calamity. I start manifesting symptoms because I'm a dickhead. And for some reason, my brain is wired that way. Joe Rogan said when he walked into that Zach Baggins museum and he walked into the room with the Divic box, which you can you can Google if you like. I've talked about it on the show that he started feeling pressure and he started feeling this and that. Is that actually happening? Or is that something our, our brains are extraordinarily powerful? We're just convincing ourselves that it's happening. There's way too much of that for me with spirits and with the supernatural where we don't have that when we talk about UAPs, right? It's, do you believe this footage that this battleship cannot lock radar on? Explain to me what that is. Like, that's not a feeling, right? That's not an impulse or an aura. It's what is. Here is a video. Now, okay, you don't think it's an alien. Well, explain to me what it is. It's a super secret craft that our military is working on. Well, why don't we ever use it? How long have we been working on it? Back in the 50s? Back in Area 51? Back in the 80s? Back with Bob Lazar? So we've had 100 years coming up on to work on this fucking technology. We can master it enough to fly it around over fucking nuclear fucking bases up in Minnesota. We can 
disappear over the Phoenix sky. But then what? Like, why aren't we dominating the globe? Why, why are we in Ukraine? We'll just fly two or three of these bad boys over. They'll have force fields. They'll be inter, uh, deme- not interdimensional craft, but um, what's the word I'm looking for? Transmedium? What is the word I'm looking for? Where they can go in the water, in the... Somebody will say it in the chat. There's way less, I feel this. There's not some old hand-trembling woman um, that's sitting there explaining to you that because her grandmother could see things, she could see things. Like, I got to suspend too much disbelief for that. Circle back around. I thought it was interesting that Matt Burke would chase and hunt ghosts, but was too nervous man nervous to slap hands on a Ouija board in Jim Jester's basement. Like there's something there that could actually affect him. Bill Chesley, thank you for the 499 Super Check. Glad to see the Steve Proof of Life. Corey and John are going to dance with the devil in the pale moonlight. I don't think that. Um... But I do think because of the hype and because of the history of the building, because I think it's pretty much proven that if a a place has a history that regardless of whether or not we're manifesting them ourselves or it's an actual energy imprint that's left, more shit happens. And that house is old as fuck, and a lot of people have died in that house. And there's a lot of sorrow. Doesn't seem to be a lot of good vibing ghosts do we know of any good vibing ghosts does anybody know of any good vibing ghosts i don't know at least none that have been documented thank you bill you're entered to win the tour biography sean o'malley ten dollars thank you brother the odds of demons in a basement is low but radon is likely to be present well there's that too um and that's one of the things where it's (laughs) I don't want to say it's a concern because, I mean, those people sleep in that house every night. But Jimmy did tell us that the only person that's been in that basement um, for years is him. His parents don't go down there. Now, I don't think it's because they're scared. I think it's because they can't get down there anymore, Um, which is a bummer, which is why I suggest everyone buy a Peloton. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I can't think of anything. We're all going to get old. We're all going to suffer injuries. We're all going to need surgeries and all that shit. But one of the reasons why I'm desperately trying to continue riding the Peloton, I'm a year in, I'm I'm trying to stay regular about it is because I don't want to get to being in my 60s and I'm fucking locked into a chair. I mean, that just sounds so terrifying to me. Uh, And I bust his balls a shitload. I don't mean any disrespect. Jimmy's situation. I'm sure a lot of people have a situation like that. But I look at what Ant-Man's parents are doing, and they fucking exercise constantly, and the surgeries they're getting are elective because they want to stay mobile, and they're traveling all over the fucking world in their 70s, and it's like, oh, still experiencing life at that stage of it? Yeah, that sounds way fucking better. Way fucking better. Sean, thank you, brother. When is the Peloton giveaway? I want one. I got to give away a Peloton? I guess I could do that. I think I would be willing to do that. The problem is, Josh, nobody fucking appreciates any of the prizes that I give away. Um, And that's, you know, it's not that expensive. Hey, Josh, you make a good enough living where if I gave you my link, you could get a discount. You could afford a Peloton. I, I mean, if you want as part of payment for helping me out with the show, I could help you out with. That's fine. But you could if you wanted one, you could get one. And I would highly suggest you get one. I'd highly suggest anyone get one. I don't like to get preachy about it when people ask me about the Peloton. Clearly, I'm, a, I'm still a big fat I think. I haven't eaten for three days, and you can see I'm still a big fat I think. But I 100% have noticed uh, improved quality in every other aspect of me getting around. Like, I'm not huffing and puffing going up the stairs anymore. I can carry boxes in and out of the shop without having my fucking hip hurt. There's nothing worse than being in your late 30s, early 40s and feeling your hip hurt and realizing, oh, I'm having an octogenarian's injury because all I do is play video games and drink 12 fucking Miller Lights. This show has fallen off so hard. How? That's what I don't get about comments like this. Like, maybe you believe that, and that's fine. But how is this different than anything else I've fucking done? 
I always fucking wonder what people were watching. I guess maybe he's talking about for me being on the radio. All right. Well, not on the radio anymore, but this seems like fun. And this seems like what I've always done. Very strange. Uh, let me know if you want to do a fucking Peloton giveaway, uh, Josh. I think we can figure out a way to do it. No Ouija boards allowed is my only rule. Yeah, that seems to be a bridge that a lot of people don't want to cross. I'd love a signed copy of Tor's book. Well, you are entered to win, Matthew Gross. Am I going to see you in Arkansas? How could the show be falling off? I'm going to Arkansas to be in a movie festival. If that's not the height of entertainment, I don't know what is. You are entered in, Matthew Gross. Thank you so much. Appreciate you for being here. Ghost hunt, find something, Ouija board follows you. I don't think that's the fucking be all end all. Um, I think we've been told that in movies. You think 100% of reaching out to try to make contact with whatever means it's going to chase you around? I, I think that's the same way we've been taught there's a the, there's a monster under the bed or in the closet. Like, there's a reason why when I was a kid, I roped up my fucking closet for years. And it was because I saw the Boogeyman episode of the real Ghostbusters. There was no reality in that. It's just something I convinced myself. Do we have, I mean, look, here's what I'm willing to do, Matthew Burke. If you are, if you're referring to like the conjuring or shit like that, if you have documented cases of that happening, I'd love to read about them. I mean, that's something I'm interested in. But I just think that it's very possible that we're just looking at that um, because pop culture has kind of conditioned us to believe that way. See here, Jorge Gonzalez. Thanks for the recommendation of the Troyer sausage, favorite thing I bought at Commonwealth Dry Goods. Uh, my pleasure, brother. Um, the Troyer summer sausage is an 11 out of 10. It's one of my favorite things on earth. By the way, we still have about 10 of these bad boys left. The dual-sided Jackson's rest stops. Our home, your outhouse koozies. We had Steve on earlier. Clearly, he's okay with me. Still not okay with the promotion. But if you place an order on CommonwealthDryGoods.com today, one of those will come in with your summer sausage order. And we got the big one-pounder big hog guy we got the big hog guy still available jorge thank you brother appreciate you very much always good to have you in the chats any news on the florida film circuit i travel to see it uh no not as far as i know josh i don't know that anything is lined up i know that the movie has been accepted to a bunch of movies for those people that i mean i assume most people there's only what are there 78 of you in here i assume most of you are aware but um the movie that I am in is going, I wouldn't say touring the festivals. Here's the way that it was, um, here's the way it was explained to me, Josh, is that we're, we're going to the Arkansas Film Festival literally because I said I wanted to go. Um, I don't know if that is the way that Dylan should be making his <laughs> travel destinations for this thing. Um, I think that when you look at what can help the movie, getting it in front of new faces and new people and what have you, um, that's always going to be a good thing. But unless there's people there that can physically buy the film, this is, of course, the post on the official Instagram at Tapawingo Film. Uh, playing the Eldorado Film Festival, hold on to your butts. Yes, that is... Uh, that's going down. I'm not in this scene, but I did read for a part that would have been in the following scene here. But then I got a bigger role, if you can believe it. The way that it was described to me, Josh, is that unless buyers are going to be there, and that's why you're talking Sundance, you're talking Austin City Limits, um, all the big guys, Cans, Can, James Can. Um, there's a lot of vanity in going to these in that it's not going to be a situation where it necessarily benefits you in your efforts to get the film sold. Because unless there are buyers that buy movies at the film festival, that you can make an argument that is not much of a point. Now, we are at the Virginia Film Festival, and Paul Giamatti had a film there. 
Um, I want to say it was either McConaughey or Clooney were in a movie that were there. I don't think they were at the film festival, but there there was a couple of pretty big fucking movies that were there. It was a big movie festival. It was it was a whole week. But the way that it was spoken to me is that necessarily it didn't help us get the movie sold. And I think that what he wants to do is hold off on taking the movie to festivals unless they can help in that endeavor. So I, I'm just speaking. That is my interpretation of it. I don't know if that is a 100% certitude. I just know that that's the way it sounded like. So it'll be fun this weekend. I'm glad Monk is going. He's already trying to ruin dinner for me. I'll show you if you guys think. Check this out. So here's the issue. I can enjoy barbecue virtually anywhere. I don't know how you guys are. There's certain foods where it can't really be shitty enough for me to not enjoy myself. I have kind of a fat guy's mentality about that. And when it comes to Monk, I would say that it's fair to characterize him as someone that has the completely opposite demeanor where he is incapable of fucking enjoying barbecue because he views it as competition. Or I don't know if he's insecure. I, I don't know what the fucking deal is, but there's barbecue places as you can see here that are going to be within driving distance of where we're staying. And he is systematically gone down. The, like, look at this place. Does this place not look like it would be a shitload of fun to go? I mean, how many times in your life are you going to find yourself in, in, in El Dorado, Arkansas, and getting a chance to go to JJ's Barbecue, lip teasing, palate pleasing? This is so lovely. And I showed this to him, and he shit all over it immediately. Look at this. They got a blooming onion. What says hometown barbecue more than a blooming onion? They got a large catfish fillet plate. This doesn't look bad, right? When I tell you, he picked apart this mother. They got steak. I didn't even know they had steak. Angus beet ribeye. I think they misspelled ribeye here. I think they missed. Did they say beet twice, bro. They misspelled beet three times. It says beef up here, and then it says beet three fucking times. You know what? Maybe I just made Monk's argument. <laughs> but doesn't that look good? The fuck is his problem? Nice hometown place. Let me tell you what I'd order. I'm getting that loaded baked potato right there. Suck my balls. That's happening. I'm getting a jumbo barbecue sandwich. Look at this. Chopped beef, sliced pork, chopped pork, sausage, turkey breast, and smoked ham. Get the fuck out of here. That doesn't sound good. And it's just one of several barbecue places that he pissed down his fucking leg about. Look at this. Browns. All right. They don't have a website. They do have a menu, though. Turkey legs. They've got turkey legs. They got catfish nuggets. My point is I didn't think this through. I was going someplace that I didn't think would have good barbecue. Monk would be the perfect companion. But now, I'm not so sure. So I want to show you the place that we're going to end up going. And it is a chain. But it is a chain that exists only in Arkansas. And I think that's why you guys will agree. I mean, this looks like quality right here. I mean, you want to talk about a solid dinner for a solid dude. I think we would agree I'm the fucking solidest dude around. Look at this. Larry's Pizza of Arkansas, going all the way back to 1992. I mean, basically, that's the turn of the century. Look at this. Huh? Look at these horrible strip malls that these things are in. There's no way they have, by the way, Larry's Pizza. I figured this out. They've got a pizza buffet. They got a pizza buffet. So that's where we're going to end up going. Coming off a of fast. We're going to do an Arkansas pizza crusade down in Arkansas, and it's going to be a 10 out of 10. I can't fucking wait. And I'm not going to let Monk ruin that. Looks like an establishment that Leatherface would frequent. You son of a bitch, Ultra Liger. <laughs> oh, man.
Oh, Josh, you're saying you just want to see the movie? Oh, I got you. I got you. I got a link. I told you I can hook you up. No problem. Just don't fall asleep in it because that's what everybody else has done. That's what Steve did. That's what Ant Man did. That's what the tube did. <laughs> that's what Neil did. I'm a team no Ouija board. Well, the good thing is, is that uh, John Page and Corey Rita are not team no Ouija board. All right, friendos, thank you for the super chats. One of you will win a beautiful tour signed autobiography. I'll post that. I have a few more to give away as well, so I'll give you more some opportunities to pick those up. Please to be going over as we speak. Please to be going over right now as soon as you are done and reminding yourself that you need to be a part of this. It's in three weeks, but you'll get a reminder. February 23rd. There it is. Jaster Family Pizza Party and Seance Sleepover. Click like, click subscribe, click all that good shit. Hit the fucking bell. And get on it. Should be a great time. Uh, brand new episode today in about an hour and a half where we go through all the machinations of how this motherfucker came about. I think you're really going to dig it. Want to thank Steve Pie Taster for coming by. Also want to thank all my great super chatters, everybody that dropped the 20 bombs. Very much appreciate you the mostest. And of course, um, yeah, who knows when we might pop up. We're definitely going to pop up down at the beach. We're definitely going to do some solid dudes from uh, Southern Shores, North Carolina next weekend. All right. So hopefully you guys make it through your fasts. Okay. Good Lord is willing on the creek stone rise. I'll see you guys in the next episode of solid dudes roll out the trash cans. Got this beat from DJ Grimey and you know it's fuego dog.